So I've noticed as I've been perusing the optimization community, quote unquote, there's a lot of people marketing snake oil. Somebody say snake oil? But it's not really snake oil. Based on the title of this video, you probably already know some of the things we're going to be talking about, but I figured I would go through and explain some of these common tweaks that I've been seeing, just so that people have a better understanding of what they do and then of course, if they will help your performance, depending on what system you have. If these explanations help you out and help you get a better grip of how to tweak your system, please of course hit the usual YouTube buttons. Support has been great. And if you need any additional help with anything, our Discord is linked below where you can ask away questions and stuff like that. I'll also be streaming the day after this goes live on Friday at 6.30 p.m. CST, along with every single Friday at 6.30 p.m. CST. I appreciate all the support and without any more of that crap, let's get straight into the content. So the first thing we're gonna look at is hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. I have this article, which I'll link below that helps explain it a lot from a developer standpoint, but I'll also explain it in my own terms so you guys get a better grasp of what it does. Essentially, if you've ever heard of the render pipeline, this takes some of the scheduling tasks off of the CPU and allows the GPU to help with those and then still do the rest of the render pipeline through the GPU as well. In theory, this should help eliminate some CPU bottlenecking and also make your Windows experience smoother. Thank you, phone. However, if you play in a scenario where your GPU's heavily the bottleneck in your system, Having this enabled may cause more stuttering and issues, especially if it has to wait for the GPU to complete other tasks before then scheduling new ones. Most modern users run this on by default, and that's what I'd recommend too, unless you're having specific issues with it running on. As you know, you could always just simply run a quick scab raid with it on versus off and then see what's better, or do a quick test with it on and off in a more controlled setting like a benchmark in a separate video game. I've been running it on with very little issues and I am in a GPU bound scenario a good bit of the time in Tarkov, though not all the time. So it's good for you to do your own personal testing and see if you notice any changes with this on versus off for yourself. That's sort of the theme with some of these tweaks because there is just so much misinformation on the internet that you probably won't be able to find if it helps your specific system unless you try it yourself. Out of all the tweaks that we're going to be running today, this is probably the one that I'd recommend the most just to try and see because this can help in a variety of games, not just Tarkov. So I'd, I'd recommend running this, especially if you have a more powerful GPU than CPU to see if you get any performance boost with it. With that, this will be linked again in the description and we should move on over to the full screen optimizations week. I think you guys have heard about this. I actually made a video. It's one of my most popular videos on my channel a while ago discussing this exact tweak. Uh, and I'm pretty sure in that video, I also said that I didn't notice any difference with it in my system and that people should test it for themselves. And then a bunch of people said, oh my God, thank you. So I didn't know why back then. And honestly, I'm not too certain as to why it's still happening, but I at least have a little bit of background I'll be able to share with you guys. So firstly, let's discuss where you find these full screen optimization tweaks. You want to go ahead and find the exe of your game. So for me, it is in uh, C slash Battlestate Games slash EFT. And it's right here. Uh, you might have it installed somewhere else, but I'd highly recommend it being installed in your C drive. So it's likely on that same file path. You can right click on that and hit on hit odd properties, what am I saying? Once you're in properties, you wanna go ahead and go to the compatibility mode. And then right in here, you'll see that check mark disable full screen optimizations. To understand this, you need to know about desktop windows manager or DWM. You might've seen this in your task manager here and there. This essentially controls how the display manages giving resources to different allocations. So for example, if I go in my Tarkov settings here in my graphics, if I set this to full screen and this is a full screen exclusive implementation, it means that everything behind this window on my desktop top is you could sort of say de-rendered as in the memory that was used to allocate storing that stuff is no longer being put there and i'll have to reload it when you tab back out this is why some players when they go to full screen say it takes them a split second to then transfer from the game to the desktop again and that's because it has to load the resources back into your gpu in order to then render your desktop again you can see that as this author says here the release of Windows 10 brought about these full screen optimizations that essentially make full screen a, as it says here, highly optimized, quote unquote, orderless windowed format that takes up the entire screen. So supposedly you get the visual experience or performance of running your game in full screen exclusive, but without the downsides. And as you know, if you're one of the borderless enjoyers like I am, then you probably know that you can just tab in and out at will and you don't need to worry about that. These full screen optimizations aim to help give you the best of both worlds. Now you may be wondering to yourself, Clem, why would I disable these then if they're supposed to help give me the best of both worlds? When you're using the default, which is enabled full screen optimizations, 
your game quote unquote believes that it's running in full screen exclusive, but Windows has the game running in borderless windows. Almost all the resources are given to the game, but it does keep a little, little, tiny, tiny portion of it for the desktop so that it can more quickly and simply render your desktop again whenever you decide to tab out. But as it says in the article down here, if you ever get issues, say input lag, and as it, it directly says performance regression, this is where this tweak comes from. This is why people recommend disabling it, as for some, it can give you more performance by giving you that true exclusive full screen experience without any of the modern optimization that Windows 10 has thrown in for it. Keep in mind that when you tick this setting, it will give you that old classic full screen. And then when you tab out, it will take you a second to load stuff back in. The more modern your system is, the quicker this should be, but still keep that in mind. This tweak has, according to the comments on that video at least, helped a good bit of people because then you actually get that true full screen experience, or should I say full screen exclusive experience. But if you check this and don't notice much of a difference otherwise, feel free to just leave this off. Since we're already in this window though, we have another amazing tweak that I actually didn't even pull up an article on, and that's change high DPI settings and overriding them by application. Essentially what this does right here is, if you didn't know, DPI stands for dots per inch. When you have it unchecked like this, it does the scaling by default, so Windows controls it and this could take up additional CPU resources in order, in order to do it. As far as I could tell in the past, the setting was made to help with older applications scaling up to newer displays and larger resolutions. As, like I just said, DPI is dots per inch. It helps the dots per inch scale correctly to your display. This was not made to be a performance boosting setting that was hidden within Windows. When you enable this to have it overridden and have the scaling performed by the application, then the application controls it itself. There's nothing taking away from the priority of that specific application. So it should reduce the amount of cycles spent on it, improving performance. This is another thing that people have been saying helped them a lot, but I simply cannot find a difference. I've tried, I can't, especially with Tarkov where results have a much wider margin of error. So now the application is controlling how it's being scaled on your monitor solely the application. Again, another one of those tweaks where you're going to have to test it yourself. And I assume based on the research that I've done on this, that it will help in more CPU bound scenarios, depending on what core is being CPU bound. So go ahead and run this as well. It's worth a shot at least. But it, again, I just one of those things where it's like, man, this is this is this is sus. This is this is snake oil. I, I, I don't know. But feel free to test it as I've had no issues setting it either way. And then as you might have seen in the little previews I have up here in Google Chrome, the last one is. OK, the last one is the infamous high precision event timer HPET. Oh, God. Okay, so let me show you how to do this first. So you go down here, you go to device manager, you get in here, and then in this window, wow, that's not what I meant to do. You go here in system devices, and then at the bottom, or not the bottom, it's alphabetically ordered, I'm stupid. You'll see high precision event timer here. You can think of timers in general as ways that the CPU schedules processes and schedules the flip of them. So for example, right, if a CPU is multitasking between a bunch of different stuff, these timers are the things that control when it swaps back and forth between doing one task and doing another. As far as I could understand from perusing the infinite well of misinformation and Reddit forum posts, it looks to me that this timer isn't used as much in modern CPUs. Every single test that I've done with this when I've tested in the past and ran quick tests now is completely within margin of error for me. So that further solidifies my theory that this might affect people on older CPUs with older architectures more than more recent ones. My best bet as to why this might improve performance in some systems is that high precision event timer when it's disabled no longer has to sync with other timers in the computer, thus reducing the amount of like stuttering, but it could lead to some desynchronization in the computer over time. I don't know if that's right, and I'm going to try to put as many sources as I can below that I read to get to that opinion. Uh, and if some of you know more, like I say next, just please do leave a comment below. Those of you who are deeper in this scene probably know a bit more. And if you do, make sure to comment below and let me know because I want to learn more about this. But again, there was just so much crap, frankly, uh, on the Internet that I don't want to provide too much misinformation myself. I just want to let you know that that's essentially what this is for and that generally speaking I saw this helping people who are on older systems. I did see some people discussing 
say on this forum that it could cause a bit of instability if you disable this. So please do this tweak with a little bit of caution, but you should be okay. And if you have any issues, uh, feel free to instantly disable it. You just go back to the same device manager, you right click on it, and then you uh, re-enable it right here. But yeah, with that one, that is the whole of all the tweaks that I was going to talk about in this video. I know it's a lot of test it yourself sort of things, but I wanted to just provide my two cents on these because I get asked about these pretty frequently. And I just wanted to explain some of these settings and discuss like their actual definition instead of just saying, please enable this because I want you guys to more know what they do than, you know, just willy nilly changing settings on your computer. I'd recommend for these, since they seem to be a bit of a, uh, hit or miss, you might want to try to test this on other games that have a more built in benchmark to see if you can find the difference because Tarkov can have a bit of run to run variety. And if you test this with one raid on and one raid off, you may not see the difference just because of the amount of run to run variance. There also just might not be a difference. So you might need to just test that for yourself. But yeah, for now, I hope this helped you guys out a lot. Like I said earlier, streaming tomorrow, Friday at 7, 6.30 to 7 p.m. CST. And then I'll be streaming for at least a couple hours, if not more. So you can go ahead and ask any questions you guys have in there. And as well, I will be linking in the top comment a Google form that you can fill out if you'd like to one on one with me and get specific guidance. It's free. I'm going to be doing some new content on it soon. I got members lined up for it, but I'm going to open it up to the public so everybody can get a chance. And that video should be coming out within the next couple of weeks. So keep that in mind. But yeah, for now, thank you guys so much for all the support. Make sure to hit the buttons. And this is Clem. Blocking out. Later.